from rookie Evan Mobley going off and living up to number three pick expectations to Darius Garland breaking out into the team's leader and Ricky Rubio shockingly dropping a record setting near 40 piece at MSG. Here's every reason for why the Cleveland Cavaliers are shocking the world in 2021-22. Paying Jarrett Allen 100 mil seems like it's paying off as he and Mobley look like the twin towers down there. Darius Garland's setting a career high in assists per game and playing the most efficient ball of his three-year career. Stay tuned to see if Cleveland can return to the playoffs without LeBron for the first time since 1998. Welcome, this is DFlow Hoops. If you're looking for NBA hot takes, predictions, and stories on a wide range of teams and players, you came to the right place. If you're an NBA fan, subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up on this video for the YouTube algorithm. It'd be greatly appreciated. I appreciate you. The Cleveland Cavaliers locomotive up front in Evan Mobley is making the Rookie of the Year conversation interesting. Kids already posted double-figure scoring in 10 separate games, and in Mobley's 11 career games, he's only come up short of tallying a block one time. Mobley's soft touch from around the basket all the way out to the three-point line, plus his high passing IQ, make him an elite big man in the first place. When you combine those qualities with Evan's explosive athleticism, and you have a top-notch prospect up front. Mobley has a 7'5 wingspan and a 40-inch vertical jump, which he's put to good use so far in the NBA. After dunking on LeBron and dropping 23-6-3 in a loss to LA a few weeks ago, here's what King James had to say about the Cavs' future at the center spot. What were your first impressions of Evan Mobley? He is uh, he's gonna be a, a damn good basketball player in this league. And it's so crazy because he was just playing against my son a couple years ago. And uh, obviously we've seen what he did in the tournament. Just electrifying. And, uh, you know, they got a good one. Cleveland has a good one. Um, they've done a great job over the years in the draft. Outside. Mobley's averaging 15 and 8 to go along with three dimes and 1.3 blocks on 52% shooting. Evan has over twice the amount of blocks as any other rookie. Also, he's third in scoring and second in rebounding among first-year players. Moving on to the number five pick from the 2019 NBA Draft in the 21-year-old's point guard product of Vanderbilt in Darius Garland. Garland's points per game may be down in year three of his career, but his efficiency from both the field and from deep has drastically increased. He's making nearly 50% of his overall attempts and knocking down 40% of his six three-point attempts per night. Garland's not only setting career highs in terms of his shooting percentages, but his team leading and career best eight assists each game have kept the perfect flow to the Cavs' pick and roll based offense. Attacks to the basket from Garland are preceded by elusive hesitations and crossover dribbles, which keep opposing defenses off balance. After catching a pass from Sexton that nearly got intercepted right here, watch this slick one dribble into a no-look pass. Great catch and finish from Mobley. In addition to his dribble combos, speed, passing, and distance shooting, Garland's finishing around the basket is also amazing. Sandwiched by Fred and OG, watch how Garland sells this step back three before hitting OG with an electric crossover to get the blow by. He somehow avoids Scotty Barnes and barely gets it over the hands of Achua. Just a play where all you can say is great defense, but better offense. Cavs man in charge, JB Bickerstaff, had high praise for his third year point guard, and this just speaks to the incredible development from Darius. Quote, I think it's the consistency. The better players in this league, the better teams in this league are extremely consistent, and you know what you're going to get from them. And I think that's where Darius is now. Darius has found that rhythm of consistency, and you know what to expect. And also, he's doing a much better job of reading games within the game. Bickerstaff isn't the only Cav praising the play from Garland, as after Darius dropped 21-8 and in a road win against Toronto, Jarrett Allen had this to say, he kept us composed. Towards the end, you could see that we were getting flustered, they were hitting some shots, our defense wasn't where it needed to be, and he got us all grouped together and told us what we need to be on our game. Got us in the right spots, got us our shots we needed. Leading the team, he was the coach on the floor. We'll get to the Cavs, new players making an impact, but the re-signing of Jarrett Allen 
was a foundational move. Allen's giving great mentorship to Evan Mobley, and he and the Rook have become an overwhelming big man duo to hold down. Jarrett's posting 15 points, 11 rebounds, and a block per game, and he's making an NBA third highest 71.4% of his shots. From his high IQ defensive rotations to his intimidating afro, which adds about three inches to his six foot 10 frame, and like Mobley, his seven foot five wingspan, that all makes Jarrett, combined with his partner in the front court, a tough task for their opponents to hold off the glass. In contested rebounding percentage, Cleveland is currently in a three-way tie with Toronto and Utah. That has everything to do with Cleveland's beastly bigs who can scrap for boards and traffic with the best of them. A move this summer that's also paying off is the free agency acquisition of the Spanish PG Ricky Rubio. Rubio dominated the pace of the game in the Big Apple, becoming the first player of all time to have 35 plus points, 10 plus assists, and 8 plus three-pointers made in a game at MSG. Ricky's stuck around in the NBA for 11 seasons after coming over from the EuroLeague in 2011-12, lasting over a decade in the toughest basketball league in the world. That's a victory in itself, but considering the Spaniard was taken number five overall back in 09, a few picks ahead of the greatest point guard of all time in Steph Curry, Rubio's been a tad underwhelming in his career. It's not the fact that he hasn't been as good as Curry, very few come close to Steph, but Rubio kicked off his career with five straight years of failing to hit 40% from either the fields or from three-point range. Sure, his nine assists per game are always solid, but Rubio just didn't come close to living up to expectations as the number five overall pick in Minnesota. After cutting ties with the Wolves initially in 2017, the last five seasons have seen the now 31-year-old spend time in Utah, Phoenix, Minneapolis again last year, and now Cleveland. It's early, but in the 2-1-6, Rubio's shockingly fulfilling the potential we all knew he once had. He's averaging a career-best 14 points per game and a career high by over 7 percentage points, 43% from deep. Another European acquired by GM Kobe Altman in the Cavs' front office is Lori Markkinen. The former Chicago Bulls lottery pick never panned out in the Windy City, but a change of scenery has been really good for Markkinen. Before he got COVID, his 13 points per night and floor spacing were giving Cleveland a decent weapon. Garland, Sexton, and the flurry of breakout players on the roster are putting this Cavs franchise back on the map. You also can't forget about solid role players in the champion Kevin Love, the Turkish scoring phenom on the wing in Seti Osman, and the sophomore shooting guard out of Belmont in Dylan Windler. Both Love and Osman have averaged over nine points per game, and Windler's only playing nine minutes. They're a scrappy group with a ton of athletes up front, and Evan Mobley is just scary. Cleveland added a ring five and a half years ago and enjoyed two decades of top seeded teams in postseason runs. Still, that was all with the man who left the organization in shambles two times in one decade. I'm sure fans in Cleveland are really hungry to get back to the playoffs without the chosen one for the first time in 23 years. Given Colin Sexton isn't even playing his best right now, and the Cavs are still at the top of the East early on, I don't think their start is a fluke whatsoever. This team plays extremely hard and they're dangerous, but let me know your thoughts in the comments section and I'll do my best to respond. This was D-Flow, you're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.